Hello everyone, I'm Dave Thomas and today I am building the Mini Bertha which is about the fifth model in the Bertha line. Unlike its larger cousins, uh, this it goes together pretty rapidly, probably less than half an hour here. The parts are pre-colored, the fins uh, go slip into a plastic fin can, so there are no balsa parts like the uh, bigger models have. So if you want to start in on a, on a Bertha rocket, this is an easy one. It's also a good one to do with smaller children. So let's go ahead and pull out our instructions and make sure we have all of the parts here. Okay. So we've got a pre-colored yellow body tube here. And then everything else is in the small parts package here. We'll go ahead and cut this open. Okay, so we've got two halves of a fin can. If you've ever built the Starhopper model, this is going to look very similar. I think that they actually use the exact same fin can there. All right, this little metal clip is actually the shock cord anchor, um, also seen in the Starhopper. Okay, we've got a motor retainer, All right, elastic shock cord streamer, black nose cone, and four fins, three yellow and one black. Okay, so we'll come back here. It right, looks like we have everything. So I'm just going to move everything to the side here until we need it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put the two halves of the fin can together. And actually the longest part about building this rocket is going to be waiting for glue to dry. Now, you don't have to glue this. Um, this thing can be put together essentially with no glue whatsoever. I do recommend gluing it though. And you can do that for, the, uh, for a lot of it afterward. So I'm going to go ahead and do this as shown here, and then I'll show you how can you can add some glue to it to make it stronger. All right, so first thing, we're just going to push the two halves together over that little series of pegs and holes, just like this. And get that as squished as you can. You, want, you don't want any gaps if you can help it there. Okay, and then we're going to take this little anchor and we're going to tie a knot in our shock cord around this. So just put the one end of the shock cord around there, tie a double knot or two half hitches. Okay, and make sure that they don't slip apart. Okay, so pull it from various directions here. All right, you don't want too much hanging out. This is okay. If it's more than this, I would cut it back a little bit. But don't cut it back all the way to the knot. And here you can even use a little bit of white glue or wood glue and just put a little dot of glue on here and just work that into the knot a little bit. Um, don't use plastic cement or super glue as that can damage the rubber. Okay, and then when we come back to our fin can here, there's on the outside a groove with a hole in it. And that we're going to put this in and that just pops down in that groove. And then we'll take our shock cord here pass it through the body tube and the end with these two little holes in it is going to go onto the fin can. So we're just going to pass that through there. All right, and then we're going to line this up with these two tabs and just push that down until those pop into the holes there. All right, and we've got our shock cord coming out the top. All right, at this point we can insert the fins. It doesn't matter really which order you insert them in. So I'm going to take a fin here and just push it in. And you do the same for the other ones. 
So just put it in the little slots here and push it up. What you need to make sure is that they clear the threaded area of the fin cam. Um, and then we can take the screw retainer there that just goes right on here All right, and then we're going to tie the other end of our shock cord onto the nose cone also using a double knot or two half hitches now this one you do need to be very careful about um, too much free end of the knot because we don't want it to get caught up here between the shoulder and the um, body tube. So I'm going to cut this back to about a quarter of an inch or about six millimeters for the metrically inclined. And the same thing here, I'm going to add just a little dab of white glue or wood glue. Just enough to help hold that in place. Now for the streamer you can either tie it on which is what they're showing here um, or you can tape it on either one's fine. I like to use a little bit of electrical tape so here I'll just get a length of it. It doesn't matter what type you use, what color it is and what I'll do here is I'm going to place about half the length on one side of the streamer a little over half the length okay I'm going to come down about a quarter of the length of the shock cord and I'm going to run that across the sticky side of the tape there and then I'm going to fold this whole thing over like that okay and before we put this all together, uh, we need some decals. There they are. They're hiding in the other part here. These are self-adhesive. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go wash my hands to get the oil and fingerprints and stuff minimized. Now I have relatively clean hands. And so we'll just put these decals on. You can eyeball this if you want or put them in a, um, you know, try and measure it on here. The only problem with these is once they stick it's really hard to get them back up and they tend to peel the colored cardboard up so we want to try and do this right the first time so I'm just holding it by the ends here I'm just going to lightly touch that down that's a little bit crooked try that again Still looks a little bit crooked to me, but it might be an optical illusion. Okay, so gently, whoop. Let's try it this way. Yeah, it looks, I think we'll go with that. So once you've got it in place, then go ahead and smooth everything down, get the air bubbles out of it. Okay, we've got two stripes that are meant to go around the rocket. And I'm actually going to make one of these go around and cover the little holes here to help hold that together. I'm going to line this up with the edge as a guide. Oop, so that's the problem right there is if that happens. Pretty close. All right, and then we'll do the same thing up here near the top. And I'm actually going to run this very close to the edge. And it doesn't matter which side of the stripe is up or down. All right, you can, of course, not use this at all. You can use your own decals. You can even paint this if you really want to. Okay. 
Now, if you're preparing this for launch, like it shows down here, um, you'd add probably two pieces of recovery watering, wadding loosely crumpled down in there, um, and then do this. I'm just going to put this away for storage, um, but the preparation is pretty much the same. So don't just try and roll it up from the end, it'll take you forever, um, and it takes longer for it to unroll then. Instead, I'm just going to fold this over on itself lengthwise a few times, so like that. We'll just bring that up and just do that one or two more times here. So once you get it close and easy to handle, then you can roll up the rest of it. Do not roll it around the shock cord. It will not deploy that way. Okay, and then we'll just uh, shove the shock cord down inside there. All right, if you're Getting ready for lunch, this goes right on top of your recovery wadding. All right, I'm going to stick that down in there. And everything should slide down very easily. And then put the nose on. And that should be loose enough that it'll eject properly, but not too loose that it falls out. So I'm just going to turn this over and just give it a shake. Okay, so as long as the nose cone isn't falling out on itself, but can be easily removed, that's what we want. Uh, if it's really tight, it probably means you got the shock cord caught in between here. Um, but if it's not the case, maybe you just got a little bit bigger nose, then take some uh, fine sandpaper and just sand this a little bit until it fits properly. If it's really loose, you can add a little uh, masking tape um, to the shoulder itself. Now you're not taping this on, you're taping this so it's got more friction. All right, and then when you're ready, just put a, a motor in here with the igniter, and it's ready to go. Okay, so as it is here, this can be flown right now, as soon as you put a motor in. All right, now, if you do want this a little bit stronger, use some brush-on type cement. For this type of job, I like this Tamiya um, or Tamiya extra thin cement. It's a very low viscosity. Now when you're doing this, go ahead and take the motor retainer ring back off so you don't accidentally glue it on there. And now I'm just going to brush this along the seams here. So where we put the fins on. And if you happen to get a little bit too much on there, don't try and wipe it off. Um, this will evaporate, and, and once it dries, it's really hard to see. So it's not a big deal. You'll, you'll actually make it more visible if you try and wipe it, because it'll pick up the plastic. Okay, here I need to be careful around the launch lugs, so we don't get them plugged up. Just like that. And then one more thing you can do is on the fin can where it goes into the body here, I'm trying to do this without messing up the fins. Okay, so gently take that off. And what you can do is add a bead of either tube type plastic cement or gel type super glue. And let me see what I've got handy here. I think I'm going to go with the tube type plastic cement. Now this always comes under, under pressure half the time here. All right, it's not going to do it. All right, so we're just going to take a bead of this. Whoop. I'm going to have to be careful there. I don't want to get this on the shock cord. So I'm just going to run a bead of that around the inside. All right, now I'm going to have to put this back in. So this is easier to do if you do it the first time and not after you put it all together. Here we'll just put that in and give it a turn and you'll feel it pop back into place there. Okay, so if you do this, give it another 15 minutes or so of drying time before you go and launch. All right, so now we can put that back on there. And there is my finished Mini Bertha 
All right. Um, this whole thing took less than half an hour to go together. Hope you have a great launch and safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.